Hey guys, it's Avenger. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're taking a look at DC Design's new F4 Phantom. This is what I've been kind of excited for because I quite like the Phantom. It's a very, very cool airplane. Now it's sitting very high on its suspension. You know how flight sim starts things out. But the McDonnell Douglas F4 Phantom 2 is an all-weather tandem seat twin engine long-range supersonic interceptor. Now it is served in different roles, including fighter bomber and uh, other such activities, bomber, escort, uh, many different roles. It's been used in so many things, including electronic warfare towards the end of its career. Now, it entered service with the Navy in 1961 after its first flight in 1958, and it was designed to be a Cold War uh, dominator, which it really did become. It became one of the signature aircraft of that conflict, if you can call it a conflict. Of course, you know, iconic from Vietnam and many such similar situations. Uh, of course, it served in the Marine Corps, the Air Force, and it also served across other nations, including the UK with the Royal Navy and the Royal Air Force. Uh, it served in Israel. It served in Greece. It served in Australia. It served in so many different places. It's an iconic aircraft and a really phenomenal piece of kit. Mac 2 Plus. Yeah. This thing has an insane kind of power to weight ratio that really puts it in a class of its own because this thing takes the fighter to the vertical. Now, uh, it's one of the largest fighters, in fact. It's huge. A very, very big aircraft, in fact. Now, we'll look at the F4E stats, actually, for this one because it's the more modern variant. But uh, the aircraft is 63 feet long, 19 meters, with a wingspan of 38 feet, which is 11 meters. So pretty big. Now, it has a empty weight of 30,000 pounds, gross weight of 41,000, max takeoff of 61,000, which is insane. It can only land at 36,000, though. Powered by two General Electric J79 GE 17A afterburning turbojets. The British models had spays in them. Now, this thing can get up to a speed of, wait for it, 1,280 knots, max 2.23 with a combat range of about 370 nautical miles and a ferry range of 1,400. Climb rate is 41,300 feet a minute. Yeah, 210 meters a second. That's us. pretty stupid. Lift to drag ratio 8.5, thrust to weight ratio 0.86. That is crazy. Anyway, that's enough statistics for this aircraft. Of course, the E-model, which came fitted with an actual gun by standard rather than a pod, had a 20mm M61A1 Vulcan under the nose with 680 rounds, which will go away very quickly. Now, this thing can carry sidewinders, it can carry uh, AM9s, AM7s, Sparrows, Amarams, it can carry AGMs, various different models and marks, different GBUs, uh, dumb bombs, everything, including nuclear weapons. So there you go. Now, the Phantom from DC Designs, it comes with a manual in the folder for it. It doesn't really go into the details of starting. That's more it says. It just leaves you to basically use the in-game checklists. Fair enough. A lot of history, a lot of systems functionality in there. Now, this is not a full systems depth aircraft. They admit that. There are limitations to the sim for now. But the first thing you'll notice externally is the textures are a little bit interesting. We'll close the weight and balancing because we've got a fuel pump here. And we'll pop the canopy for us. In fact, we're going to do a couple of little things here first, including down here, where the ladder control is. And we'll put our chocks out, which are over there. And then we'll go external. So let me slow down my camera here. Now, external textures are a little disappointing to me, to be honest. Um, some of them are okay. Like, parts of it look reasonable, but it seems as though they made a decent paint kit, but then just slapped delivery under it in straight layered format, rather than actually blending and toning back uh, the panel lines and rivets, which are a little rudimentary looking, if I'm honest. Okay, very rudimentary, but it seems like they've not been faded out at all. Uh, the aircraft's very, very matte. No real kind of metallicness to it or surface. Even though they are painted a fairly matte colour, there's always a little bit of reflectivity. This is just flat. Hopefully we'll get some good third-party liveries for it uh, that will make it look a lot nicer. Because just fading out those rivets and panel lines would make it look significantly better. Now... One of the most important things when you look at an aircraft like this is the modelling. And it's, it's actually decent enough. So with a good livery on it, I think this thing could actually look pretty impressive. And you'll note I have no weapons on mine. I got mine from the marketplace, so it will not come with them. If you get it from a third-party retailer, it will 
have the options for the weapons. Obviously, you can't fire them. So that's the thing. Yeah, external texturing isn't phenomenal. I'm not a huge fan. Now, let's take a look inside, shall we? This is VF-84's uh, aircraft. Now, it comes with many liveries, as you'll, of course, see. Uh, we have the original F4, we have the F4E, and we have uh, the Royal Air Force model. So, there we go. Apparently, need to be tabbed in to go back into the aircraft. So, we'll pull the chocks off and now we've got the parking brake on. We'll pull up our ladder. We'll leave the thing open. So, I'm going to switch off one of the throttles here, which you can hide with the button here so we can get to the starter buttons and various other options for the aircraft. So, we'll make sure our generators are, in fact, on. Electronics are on as well. Excellent there, excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay. And we will make sure we get the ignition on for both engines. And then the engine starters are engaged as well. We'll get this done as quickly as we can here. We'll put that back in visibility. Now you can actually refuel the air by simply just popping out the refueling probe straight in level and it'll refuel you, but we're not going to do that, are we? So, of course, up here, we have our various screens. We have a map view. We also have, or is it? It's a TV camera view, but it's not centered for some reason. I'm not sure why that is, uh, but there you go. We have brightness control for it. We also have our hood up there as well, which in this is just a gun sight. There is not necessarily a... Uh, actual heads-up display, so that is a various factor. Actually, I forget how I actually turned this on. Did I just turn everything up? I think I just turned everything up. It does sometimes fox me as to how it works, because none of it is actually described in the manual. You just expect it to kind of know it. So, there we go. Oh, there, there we go. We have air-to-ground, we have air-to-air. And various other controls. Cool, so that's operational. We'll move this back to our uh, map view. We have radar as well. We'll put it back on map. So the engine should be firing up now. When they think about it. Make sure our stuff is in the right positions here. We should be getting an engine light, which I'm not getting, which is the interesting part here. Because I followed the instructions it gave me was the engine starters and other settings there. Those should be good to go, one might think. But it appears to not be. Which is always one of those factors that always hits me because we have got our checklists up here. We do get our extensive uh, before start. Those are all set. We have starting cold. Gens are on. Pedestals are on. DC's on. Total hide is as preferred. Those are being gauged. Oh, it's not actually starting. Even though I did those things. We'll just reset those and try it again. Right, so, ignition switch on. On. Then we go for engine, master, left and right, on. And we go for engine starter, one. Which is exactly what I did. So, if it works this time, I think it's trying to work this time, but it doesn't seem to be indicating that it is, and there'll be a matter of simply starting the second engine after we get 50% or higher on the N2. We're not getting any movement at all. Someone's probably pointing out to me in the comments right now exactly what I did wrong, although I'm following how this tells me to do it, and when I did it just before I reviewed this for you, it worked, so there you go. Oh, magic control E, make things happen. Because I am not sitting around for review whilst I fiddle as to why the checklist it gave me isn't working. So we'll just do this instead. Engine's starting up for us. We're going to get ourselves moving now and get ourselves taxing as soon as these are actually operational. Because, uh, yeah, we want to get on with this and try and see what we're looking at here. Uh, interior texturing is. Damn. It's not bad, but it's not great. And this is a $30 aircraft, so I would have expected a bit more, which it hasn't given us. So the off-center TV screen on this is a bit weird. 
but I'm more bothered about the fact that the texturing internally and externally is kind of mediocre. Um, this is almost Vertavia level. Now, some of the other aircraft from DC have been better. I'm not sure I put this in the same category. Right. Finding the actual canopy closed positioning as well is hard. But there we go. I think it's, it's down there. You have to actually act, look down. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so it's, it's right down there. So the angle by default is kind of awkward. Okay, engines are good, so let's take our parking brick off, which is down there. And we'll pretend the fuel box isn't here. And we're going to do a very fast taxi here because we're at Nellis and it's huge. And we really want to get out of here. Like I said, um, I really want to like it because it's a Phantom. And it's not a cheap Phantom. And DC have done some decent aircraft. But I, I'm not sure I like it. it. It handles great in the air. And its general overall behavior is pretty good. Uh, again, we're going for a very fast taxi. I need to get off the ground ASAP. Uh, we do have our wing fold down there. It does function. So we can fold those bad boys up there. Keep ourselves turned in the right way. We have to slow down here, in fact, to get ourselves turned for the runway. It just doesn't look quite right with that texturing. It's just not right. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Spaghetti-o. There we go. Thank you. Let's get the wings down and locked. Shouldn't be taking off with those up, although I'm pretty sure the Phantom could manage it. Weird enough. I know an A7 once took off with its wings folded. Or they weren't properly latched and they folded on takeoff. That's a shock for the pilot looking out the window, right? So we're looking at about 170 for takeoff, and then we're pulling our gear and flaps in before 250. So we'll go one notch down on our flaps to take off, and gear will come up immediately after we clear the ground. Now you will get audible kind of AOA warnings with this aircraft on approach and uh, flight, so something to be very much aware of. As I'm overshooting the center line immediately, because I'm still not quite used to taxing this thing yet, so we'll just recenter ourselves. go. I will say at least the brightness on the actual gun sight is better on this version. Some of their older models had very, very dim hoods. Full burner takeoff. Uh, speed's coming up. Needles alive. Coming through 100. 150. And we're rotating. Gears coming up. Flaps are retracting. Nose forward. Four hundred knots. Let's go up, shall we? Got a full burner takeoff here. Woohoo! We're going straight up. <laughs> Look at that altimeter needle go bang. Still got plenty of airspeed here. Okay, we'll stop up at 15,000 feet. I think that feels reasonable. Kill the burners. And level off. So that's 15,000 feet in about as many seconds. This thing is a monster. <laughs> We're over Vegas right now, of course. So we see the strip down there ahead of us. Over there. Oh, it wouldn't be Vegas without giving it a good scud run, wouldn't it? So we'll power back here and let ourselves descend into this. I think the aircraft's not terrible. I mean, it's a fun aircraft to fly. And it behaves like a Phantom should, based on what I know of the numbers of the aircraft and how it's meant to operate. And you forget how big an aircraft this is. The Phantom is huge. This is no small fighter. This thing is a chunky monkey. It really is. And it's part of the reason why I like the aircraft. Now, someone make an A6, but make it good, please. I really need a good A6. There we go. 
Hi, Vegas. How are you doing today? So I'll snap our necks off with a super high G10. We're looking for four or five hundred knots for uh, maneuvering and turning. We're losing a bit of speed there, so we'll try and maintain that. Head back towards McCarran. Now my overhead brakes aren't fantastic, so I'm going to set up for a long run in towards McCarran. It should be good for us. But uh, the aircraft does fly, and it is fun. Like it flies well. Uh, we of course had Batavia's A4, which is an aircraft I really wanted to love, but it did not feel like an A4. This flies more like a Phantom in any other game I've flown Phantom in. It's big, but it's maneuverable, and it's heavy, and it's fast. And it's in its own kind of class of monster, really, amongst the interceptors of the uh, Cold War. But she's no F-16. She's the F-16's great-grandmother. Or oh, grandmother, really. Although it was never in the same category, I suppose. I suppose you'd say it's the great-grandmother of the F-18. Right, where is McCarran? Oh, right in front of me. Looks like we'll attempt a break, because we're already lined up for the center line for the pattern. So we'll attempt that break here. So we're going to slow down for 350, 400 over the field, which we're exceeding right now. So let's pop out our spoilers. Under the wings. Pull those in. Now, angler attack something you have to really, really, really monitor on this because she's a bit of a pig when it comes to landing. Big nose and visibility is surprisingly interesting for this aircraft. So, we'll come overhead. About the right altitude. There's Las Vegas Speedway over there. Great NASCAR track, although very slippery off too. Okay, let's break, 4G break for the downwind. It wasn't actually tight enough, that was a 2G turn, so could have done me better than that. Okay, we're going to slow it down here, we're going to drop our gear and our flaps. We want to keep our speed up here so we can maintain and control our angle of attack a lot better. Now we're going to trim the aircraft in this configuration so we have actually got a nice neutral maneuverable angle. So I need a lot more power here to maintain with this configuration. Okay. Angle of attack is upset with me, so more power on. She's very draggy in this configuration. Yep, this is killed my concerns with power here. Notice the warning stops as the angle of attack drops down again. I'm almost having to go into burner to maintain uh, attitude with this. We're a little bit lower than I'd like to be right now, so we'll... Yeah, it's not impressed with me. I'm going to reduce my flaps, actually. Okay, let's roll around here for that setup for final. This is not going to be anywhere as near as sexy as my uh, F-16 landing. I guarantee you that. That one was somehow magical. This one, I don't know what we're going to get. We'll find out together. We're about 170 here. I'm trying to push the nose down and finish rounding out the heading. Just to warn you, I am flying with a yoke, so there is that. I'm off center, horribly off center. It's a terrible one, and all the DCS fanboys will be laughing at me, which I'm okay with because I'm not a fighter pilot.
No, go, go back up again. I'm floating so hard. There we go. It wasn't awful. I drifted and wobbled around a bit, but the landing was chef's kiss. We touched down nice and soft after it eventually decided it wanted to. So there is that. Okay, let's pull all those back in. We should be clear to turn off the taxiway here and be good to go. It's a lot to learn. It's definitely a very unique aircraft in terms of how it wants to fly and especially its behaviour with flaps and gear out is very different. Uh, it really doesn't like a lot of things when you have a lot of flaps out. But overall, it's a fun aircraft. Is it a $30 aircraft? No, it's a $20 aircraft. If I'm brutally honest, it's a $20 aircraft being sold as a 30 um, I don't think it has enough features to warrant being that price. And considering what we just got for 50 from A to A and Just Fight, eh, external textures are lacking. The internals could be forgiven. And I'd be okay with the internal textures in here if the external was about the same quality or better. But, like, I'm seeing low resolution. I'm seeing uh, some stretching in places. There's a seam in the texture map right there right in eye line that is not forgivable in my eyes because that's right where you can see it and the the texture that's been used to give some metal detailing is cut in the middle so there is that um i do like it though it's it's fun and i will probably fly this around a lot as a fun fighter to fly especially learning to master the actual <laughs> landing characteristics of this aircraft and not ballooning so hard but it's not a 30 dollar aircraft I hope it'll be improved. I mean, honestly, the external textures, you could get a big improvement. And this is me talking as a texture artist here. A huge improvement. Simply, and, and hear me out here. Shut those down. You can have a huge improvement on this aircraft by adding a tiny bit of alpha and specularity to the external textures just to take the edge off the matte sheen. Leave it matte, but just take the edge off it and drop the opacity on the panel lines rivets 50% and boom you have a far 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 superior aircraft and also with, with no reflectivity you can't really tell there's a normal map on this aircraft there is but you can't really tell add a tiny bit of shine and it'll pop out so much more a tiny bit of shine and those rivets will pop out look at the tail fin surface there the detail you can see just from the actual reflectivity of the bare metal I'm not saying that level of shine but just a nudge and you drop the opacity on those textures 50% for the panels and rivets it would be perfect well, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this review and or laughed at my landing, which is fine. I'm okay with that. Uh, otherwise, this is the DC Designs F4 Phantom with the F4E and the RAF model, the FG, whatever we called it. Bye.